Honoviruses are a family of viruses usually found in rodents, which can lead to various diseases in humans. According to the CDC website, Honoviruses in the Americas are known as New World Honoviruses and may cause Honovirus Pulmonary Syndrome, also known as HPS. Other Honoviruses, known as Old World Honoviruses, are found mostly in Europe and Asia and may cause Hemorrhagic Fever with Renal Syndrome. HFRS. Each Honovirus serotype has a specific rodent host species and is spread to people via aerosolized virus that is shed in urine, feces, and saliva, and less frequently by a bite from an infected host. So as you can see, there are two different types of diseases most frequently known to be caused by the family of viruses based on location. So what would happen if the virus spread around the world? Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if the Hana virus spread around the world infecting millions? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host, Jared Bronstein. Be sure to stick around until the end of this one for some bonus content. And as always, let us know in the comments below some videos you'd like to see on our channel. For now, let's get right into it. If you've yet to see our previous video on the Hana virus, could the Hana virus be the next big outbreak? Be sure to check that out after this one, as it may answer some questions you might have. So the interesting thing about the Hana virus is that unlike our current pandemic, there seems to be different diseases that stem from the illness depending on location. In the United States and the West in general, the common types of Hana viruses such as Sinobre and Andes can lead to the disease Hana virus pulmonary syndrome, also known as HPS. Other strains of Hana viruses such as Hantan, Dobrava, Sarima, Sol, and Pumala are mostly found in Europe and Asia and are more likely to cause hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, also known as HFRS. It seems the reason the West side of the world carries a group of viruses that lead to one disease while the east side has quite the opposite is due to the wildlife. The virus stems from rodents, and it seems depending where said rodent lives, determines what types of honovirus they carry. The way someone could get infected with the virus would be from ingesting or inhaling dust that had urine, feces, or saliva on it from an infected rodent. Although less likely, it's also possible a rodent bite infects you, or of course, you eat the infected rodent. Regardless of how millions around the world were to be infected, one thing is for sure, somehow, some way it happened. And that in itself would be a problem. Unlike our current pandemic, honoviruses aren't known to be contagious in the sense that they could be transmitted from human to human. There have been extremely rare cases in Chile and Argentina where person-to-person -person transmission of the specific honovirus called Andes virus have occurred, which is currently being researched. Considering how if this virus, or should I say viruses, did infect millions worldwide, and it didn't spread the traditional way of human-to-human -human transmission, that may mean we have other problems as well. The most common way for someone to get the virus, which can lead to the two previously mentioned diseases, would be through airborne transmission, which could happen if someone were to breathe in contaminated air. This tends to happen when someone with a rodent infestation, such as rats or mice, comes into contact with the polluted air, which can occur after fresh rodent urine, feces, or nesting materials are dropped as per the CDC. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know they have an infestation until they see multiple rodents. By the time they actually see the rodent or rodents, it's quite possible they've already come into contact with the virus without them knowing. This would be a normal situation for lack of a better word. It's a commonly known way of people getting infected. Which means if millions worldwide were to get infected, then we could be potentially facing another global issue, a worldwide rat or rodent infestation. And that in itself would be more of a problem than if the Hana virus spread worldwide to millions. Figuring out how the virus started to spread in the first place, as is the case with almost any illness, would be our biggest issue. How can millions of people worldwide ingest contaminated air from rodents? The most realistic answer would be a worldwide infestation, meaning rats are running all over the sidewalks and streets, dropping feces and peeing everywhere, leading to the general public eventually getting sick. Now the real issue here is that one rat wouldn't simply overproduce worldwide, meaning there would be different types of viruses spreading across the world, and that could mean depending on which country or even city you're in determines that type of infestation you're dealing with. In the United States, deer mice are most commonly known to carry the virus, which means the US may be dealing with a deer mice infestation, whereas other countries or even European cities would be dealing with other types of rodents. Regardless of however the virus spread, it may lead to more problems than our current pandemic, because the western side of the world would be dealing with a completely different virus than the eastern side. That being said, considering how the virus doesn't jump from one person to another the way corona does, I don't think we would necessarily be on lockdown, nor would we need to social distance. Of course, emergency plans would be put in place, and if millions worldwide were infected, odds are the CDC would officially call our hypothetical situation a pandemic. But the reality is, if honoviruses did spread, they most likely wouldn't be as fatal as corona, assuming medical professionals are able to stop the virus before it turns into the deadly diseases. Considering how we've known about the viruses for decades after hitting North America as early as 1993 and Europe as well as Asia back in the 1950s, it seems we'd be much more readily equipped to deal with a honovirus outbreak than we were with corona. According to statistics, Canada sees three cases a year compared to the US, who usually have around 35. 
but between 1993 and 2017 has seen a total of 728 cases of the disease. However, there have been outbreaks before. Back in 93, an area between Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah called the Four Corners was determined to be where the first outbreak of the HANA virus occurred in the United States, after a handful of people came down with an unexplainable illness. More recently, in 2012, an outbreak occurred infecting 10 people in Yosemite National Park in California. And as recently as 2017, the CDC confirmed 31 facilities in 11 different states tested positive for soul virus, mostly rat breeders. Odds are you didn't hear about the most recent outbreaks in the news because they clearly didn't feel it was much of a concern to let the general public know, so clearly the disease or virus isn't as big of a deal as one may think. But if it did spread around the world, it wouldn't be considered a seasonal flu either. As previously mentioned, we'd need to find out how the spread happened in the first place. It's also important to mention, although we know more about hantaviruses as well as the potential diseases they can cause, there's only so many hospital beds and doctors available to help those who are sick. Much like a current pandemic, when an illness spreads as quickly as corona did, it creates a massive increase in the average amount of patients that need to be looked after. Normally, hospitals are made to have enough room for the average amount of people they see on a daily basis. It's very rare that a hospital doesn't have a bed for a patient or a doctor available to see them. But when the average number of patients increases tenfold, well, you're going to run into some problems. And like any pandemic, if hantaviruses were to spread all over, you can be sure that the world simply wouldn't have enough resources to tend to every single person who unfortunately were to fall ill. This would lead to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of casualties, considering how the diseases caused by this family of viruses is incredibly fatal. With a mortality rate of 38% for HPS, odds are those who don't get medical help sooner than later wouldn't be able to win the fight. The interesting thing about HFRS is that due to the fact that it can cause so many diseases, the mortality rate is tough to track. Reports claim Hantan and Dobrava, which are mostly found in China, Russia, Croatia, Romania, and Greece, as well as a handful of other countries, tend to be more severe than Seoul or Puma for example. In regards to mortality rates, it depends on the virus which caused HFRS, but as per the CDC, deaths can occur in less than 1% of cases, up to 15% respectively. So when talking about which countries would be hit the hardest and which would recover the quickest, well, it depends on a handful of things aside from resources and how wealthy a country is. For example, diseases caused by HFRS found in the eastern parts of the world aren't nearly as deadly as HPS, but some are more fatal than others. Another important factor to mention is that we are still learning a lot about the family of viruses and diseases they can lead to. Although we've been studying them for decades, as always, new science changes past beliefs, which is evident now that researchers are aware one specific type of virus can transmit between humans, something they didn't think was possible before, at least when talking about hantaviruses. And I'm not a fortune teller, so I can't 100% say for sure this is in fact what would happen if hantaviruses did spread worldwide infecting millions. But based on the information I gathered, yeah, I think I covered all of it on this one, so there you guys have it. For now, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my take. Do you think it would be better, the same, or worse if this virus spread worldwide in comparison to our current pandemic? For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What are the scariest things hiding in the deep sea? Hannibal Solo, great name, said, stop trying to make me scared to take a bath. I wasn't trying to make you scared to take a bath. You know, odds are the deep water creatures won't fit through your spout or drain. I guess spout. It's been a long day, guys. Wherever water comes out, that's where I don't think an angler fish would fit. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Lone Wolf 95 said, what if we kept walking? I don't know what you meant by that. Like, you eventually get to the same place because the world's round. You wouldn't fall off the edge of the earth. If you're, if you're a flat earther, you're wrong. The Real Sanzibo said, this has always been so fascinating to me because we know as a species less than 2% of all the knowledge to be obtained underwater, meaning that it's completely possible that horrifying monstrosities could and do exist deep below. That's the point I'm trying to make, man. I mean, I shouldn't assume you're a guy, but that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, there's so much unexplored that even from what we do know that's scary, that could be the tip of the iceberg. So it is exciting. Anyways, guys, gonna wrap this one up. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching LBQ. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.